guys. So today we will be doing um, IV medication administration, but this segment is gonna focus on IV pushes and um, just flushing your IV. So I will have another video that will show you actually how to set up um, IV piggy bags and IV solutions and all that kind of stuff like that through the IV pump. But this one is just gonna be on IV pushes. So um, what we're gonna do is, First, before we even get our medications, we're going to access um, our patient's IV site. So you want to perform hand hygiene and, um, you know, verify your patient and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we just want to check out the IV. Before we even get our medications, we want to make sure we have a working IV. Because I can't tell you how many times I've got all my medicine and I was ready to go. And then the patient IV was no good. So we want to look at it. So if we're looking at it from the outside, it looks like it's a good working IV. But looks can always be deceiving. So what would you need first? You would need um, an alcohol swab. And we will need a saline flush. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to alcohol wipe this hub. And we want to just scrub it for like 15 seconds just to make sure um, that we get any, any bacteria that was hanging. Because this didn't have a cap on it. And we'll talk about caps later on. All right. So also you want to make sure that this clamp right here you have it on the open side because if you would have kept it here on the um tightened side we wouldn't have been able to use the iv so the reason why that clamp is there just to prevent backflow um from blood coming out of the vein into the line all right so then we got our um saline so we always want to get the little bit of air out of your saline all right so then we're going to connect all right so there is no um rate that you need to push but just push at a little steady little rate and while we're doing that we're going to be feeling above the iv and see if we feel any hardening if we feel any swelling up we are also going to be looking to see if it's turning red and then you're going to ask the patient hey do you feel any pain um while i'm doing this any pain or burning if they say no then this iv is good so we'll just go ahead and flush the rest of this um saline in the patient so this IV is good and running. All right, so Miss Smith, um, I'm gonna grab your um, medication, okay? Cause I know you were complaining of some pain medication. So what, um, I mean, you were complaining of pain and wanted some pain medication. Can you tell me where your pain is and on a scale from one, zero to 10, how bad is your pain? All right, Miss Smith said that her pain was a 10 and it was in her leg um, and she had a leg fracture, so that's expected. All right, so Miss Smith, I'm gonna be right back, okay? I'm gonna, gonna, gonna go grab your medication. So based off of your assessment data, you then can choose which medication Miss um, Smith should go. So you perform hand hygiene going out the room. All right, so now we're at the Pixies. All right, so we look at our MAR, and Miss Smith, she's, if it says if her pain is greater than a five, she can have one milligram of morphine. Okay, so her pain was um, a 10, and she gets this every four hours, and the last time she had it was exactly four hours on the dot ago. So she is good to have it. Her vital signs are stable. Her um, O2 saturations are good. Her blood pressure is good. So um, it's safe for me to give her this medication. All right, so I'm gonna go to the Pixis and I'm gonna pull the correct medication. So this is morphine and you actually see um, morphine coming in this little vial right here. So this is um, for Dun, dun, dun. This is um, a two milligram vial of morphine. And so there is two milligrams in here. And this is um, how many mLs is in here? It's um, two mLs. So two milligrams in here and it's two mLs. So we only have to give one mL because our order is for one milligram. Does that make sense? So it's two milligrams in here and it's two mLs in here. So we're gonna give one mg. All right, so we got our correct medications. We're gonna perform hand hygiene, put on our gloves. 
We can go back and verify a patient. Ms. Smith, can you tell us your name and date of birth? Sure. All right, that's her. All right, so after you got on your gloves, we've already confirmed our patient's name and date of birth. Um, always ask allergies. Do you have any allergies? No. Nope. We also double check the chart that she doesn't have any allergies. All right, so what all do we need? So we need um, the medication, we need our syringe, and we need our blunt tip needle, and then we also need um, a flush. So we need our blunt tip needle in order so we can pull out the medication from this little vial thing. So I'm gonna show you how that works. So we're gonna twist that on here. And then it just pops off. So you don't have to alcohol wipe this because this is brand new. All right, so we're gonna get one ml. So we're gonna stick our blunt tip needle in here and then we're gonna pull out one ml. And I like this syringe, um, this little, cartridge stain because it has the mls right on the side of it all right so what i forgot to do i didn't put air so i wouldn't put air in this right here because it's okay we just cut this part out so So we're gonna pull out and we got our one mls all right so per our facilities our facility wants us to dilute our, our morphine so on the mar it says that we have to dilute our morphine with 10 mls of normal saline and we must push it over four to five minutes all right so we have a another syringe and what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull back. So we may not be able to dilute it with, let's see. We're gonna pull it back and then we're gonna insert our medicine in here. So you take your blunt tip and go inside of here. And yep, yeah. so it was just enough. All right, so then we wanna move it up right here. All right, so now we wanna make sure that we take our alcohol pad and we wanna clean this hub. We've already flushed it, so we know that our IV is working. So, they gave us an order to tell us that we have to flush this so, medication. They gave us an order to tell us that we have to flush this, Push this medication over four to five minutes. So, a lot of the time, our medication is gonna be in the line. So, all right, so how I will prime the line, like I will push like two, um, basically like two MLs. Make sure your clamp is open. I will push like two MLs and that will get us like right there. So I would start my time from that. Everybody is different when it comes to that. Some may tell you um, to start your time all the way from back here, but just think about it. If you're pushing medication and you have to go through this whole tube right here, is not gonna be accurate. So um, I don't do any more than two mLs. So I'll push two mLs and this should be about two mLs worth of fluid right there. That should put us right here or close. All right, so we know that we have to push this over four to five minutes. So that's what we have to do. So we're gonna push some. Stop and how you doing? You doing okay today? You're just gonna to talk to your patient during this time. Push a little some more, talk to your patient. And all this time, you're just assessing the IV. You feeling okay? You're doing good, making sure it's not leaking. And you just slowly gonna push some, push and pause. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, we just gonna act like the time has went by. 
So not all medications have a certain time that you have to um, push them over. Um, the pharmacy does a good job of telling you which medications have to be pushed over a certain time, but you want to make sure you follow it because um, especially with your antibiotics and stuff, it could be very harmful to the kidneys if it's given too fast. So you want to just make sure that you're pushing it at the correct um, rate. Now, if your medication doesn't have a um, specific time, then you can just push it like you did a flush, you know, like at a constant speed a constant rate but if it is um to be given of a certain amount of time then honestly you want to make sure that you set your watch that you're looking at the clock to make sure that you're giving the medication at the appropriate um rate all right all right ding, da, da, da. we got a couple more minutes i'm not gonna bore you guys with five minutes but you get what i'm saying All right, so after you do this, then you would need to flush your patient's IV. All right, so let me see, do I have a flush near? So you would need to flush your patient's IV. still flushing all right so now that you're done giving the medication you want to disconnect you want to alcohol wipe again and then you're going to connect a flush so now you have to flush this medication in it is so important that whatever um rate or the um the amount of time that you gave the medicine you have to do the same with the flush so we now have to do another four to five minutes so think about it. A lot of medicine is still in the tubing. So if you come behind it and just slam it in there, you just gave the medicine at <laughs> a fast rate. So you just want to make sure that you do whatever um, rate that you administer the medicine at. So we did four to five minutes with the morphine. We now have to go behind it with the rest of the four to five minutes flush. All right. So while we're flushing this, um, we know that we still have one milligram left of this morphine in here. So we can't just go throw this in the sharps because this is our narcotic. So what we will need to do is we will need to go to a nurse and show the nurse. You could tell her that, hey, I had a patient that was ordered morphine, one milligram. I gave one milligram and it's now one milligram in here. Will you waste this with me? So it is ideal that you waste First, so like before we even gave the patient any, we um they really want you to waste beforehand. But you will see that it's kind of hard to waste beforehand. Sometimes you can't find a nurse. So you want to make sure if you're wasting afterwards that you keep the syringe. So what that nurse would do is um she would just witness that it is one um milligram left in here. And then um if your facility has a little um um, little med dispensing thing where you can dispense your medicine. You can put it in there. You can put it down the sink or you can put it in the sharps. But with morphine, we have to get a witness that say that we wasted the remainder of the medication that was in here. All right. So now we're done with our flush. So we're going to go ahead and clamp our IV right there. And then what we're going to do, we're going to add a little swab cap on the end. And this is our little alcohol wipe, um, our little alcohol cap that keeps our um, IV nice and clean. So this is only supposed to be used, uh oh, this is only supposed to be used one time. So whenever you take it off, you have to get another one. So earlier, this IV did not have a cap on it. So that's why we had to scrub the hub. But if um if this was on here we could have went straight into using an iv i always teach you all to even though it has a cap on there still alcohol wipe it because you never know if that is a new cap on there and if it's not a new cap let's say somebody is reusing it then um the the antibacterial um you know mechanism that it was supposed to have is not going to have all right so you want to clamp it you want to 
to tell your patient, hey, your medication should be kicking in shortly. You know, let me know if you need something. So that is administering medication via IV push and how to flush your IV. So when do you flush your IVs? You flush your IVs before medication administration, after medication administration, and between medications. So let's say we had multiple IV medications to give. We will flush it with 10 cc's of um, saline before each. We will flush it after blood administration. We will flush it after um, we before and after we draw um, blood. Let's say if it was a central line. Um, so we've always going to be flushing um, our, um, our IV accesses. All right. So I hope this made this easier for you guys.